Y'all want to go back to the past? Where things allow for a deeper, more, more personal connection, right? Body language, reading expression, smiles. Or are you feeling like modern times are better? Is life a little better the way it is now when it comes to dating? Because you don't have to, you don't have to commit to a date before you get to know somebody, right? Family, what's going on with y'all? Welcome back. Welcome back. Psych Expansion Podcast. I am your host, Gabriel Elijah. The podcast where we discuss the connections between past, present, and future generations. How y'all doing today? What is good with y'all? How has your week been so far? How is your relationship going? How are your kids doing? What's good right there? That is what's good. You know what I'm saying? I hope all is well with each and every one of y'all to get into my week if you want to know how I'm doing. You feel me? So this past week, maybe toward a little, maybe toward the end of last week, I started reading my Bible again. And which I think is important. But I started reading my Bible again. I read Genesis, loved it. I read Exodus, loved it. And then I got into Leviticus, right? So Leviticus was challenging for me in the beginning because it was a bit repetitive in a sense. Like, it seemed like I was reading the same thing over, which I was, but I wasn't. But so I'll tell you what I did, though, to actually to, to help me better understand what that what I seen as repetitiveness. I actually went to YouTube and there's this channel called The Bible Story or something like that. The Bible Story or something. But basically, they have 2D animation and quotes from the Bible. But it's like a whole cartoon, in a sense, where they go through and explain each book in the Bible. Some parts, like Exodus was split up into two parts. Leviticus was split up into two parts. But anyways, what I did was I watched the Leviticus one, and then I went back and read it, which it cleared any fogginess or misunderstandings that I had up whenever I started reading. Actually, to be honest with you, I'm not even finished reading. I probably got four more pages to read in Leviticus until I'm done. But with all that being said, Leviticus is pretty good so far. It's pretty good so far. The whole Bible in general is pretty good so far. There's books that I read ahead, like Ruth. I read the book of Ruth, which is pretty good, but I'm going to still read it again because I want to start from beginning and read it all the way through. Even though I was told that you can Get parts. I just want to. I just want to read it all the way through. You know what I'm saying? What else is What else has been going on during the week? Oh yeah, I've been planning a lot of guests. I've made a list. I actually, what I did was I bought a, a podcast mastermind from David Shans from the Social Proof Podcast. If you don't know who that is, you sleep. And sleep is for suckers. So you gotta wake up. But I bought a mastermind from David Shans and. I started planning guests for the podcast. I had always wanted to do podcasts. Yeah, episodes with guests. But one thing that was holding me back was really my software for my Mac. I couldn't get the software downloaded on my Mac for some reason. And I feel as if I need another mic or the quality isn't going to be as good. But I contemplate that with myself. Is, is the quality, does the quality have to be the greatest? Or do you just need to get out there and get the experience and just let the people be heard? So yeah, that's what I'm dealing with that. Also, I'm sure y'all are aware, summer is right around the corner. Summer is right around the corner. What y'all doing? Y'all know y'all getting right. I know y'all getting right for the summertime. And guess what? I am too. You feel me? I am too. I went to ChatGPT and I figured out me a caloric deficient diet. And it said to reach my goal by the time before a little before mid before mid June, I need to consume eighteen hundred calories a day to meet my goal. It's just slight. I really, I honestly, it's hard because I don't eat a lot, right? I can eat the smallest thing and be good. I just need to eat something. I feel like, like I can literally eat, I can literally eat got like a fun size of crackers and get some peanut butter, eat it, and I'll be good until I don't know how long. Like, I don't even think about food that much. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. 
another thing is that it told me that I need to, in order to help reach my goal, I should do like a high fruit and lean meat diet. But I don't really, I don't really like red meat and chicken. I try to stay away from. It's just my preference, right? So I, I do fish though. I do fish. So what I'll do is high fruits, fish, and the vegetables. No, no tuna or, or I don't really, I really don't like tuna. I like salmon though. Salmon is so good. Salmon is so good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But let's get into it. But before we start, check out the visuals on YouTube. If you are listening to it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and if you are on YouTube, we have the audio versions on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast at, whatever. So yeah, again, summer is almost here, right? And we got to get fine. We got to get fine for the summertime. I don't understand. We got to get fun for the summertime. And speaking of getting fit and fun, guess what I did? Last night, I was watching a TV show called Upload, and there was a scene where they were talking about dating and whatnot. And I downloaded it again. I downloaded it again. I downloaded Tinder again. I don't even know why I be downloading Tinder, to be honest with you. And I don't even know. It's like sometimes I'll get connections or whatever, and I won't even message the person. I just, I don't know. It's not even like they're, it's not even like they're unattractive or anything. I just, I believe I am fatigued. I am fatigued right now. And I'm also focused on other things as well, but I am fatigued with the dating scene. Just, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know what it is. I haven't put much thought into like why I actually don't, I'm not currently pursuing a person. I, I have, I don't know. I also struggle with my bio, yo, because it's like a fine line with the Tinder bio. Like you can't have too much or can you, or you can't have too little or can you, like, I don't know. Somebody got to teach me the game, yo. Put me on, put me on. I feel like an old head now. You know what I'm saying? And I don't actually know what to put in there. You can't give people too much of you. Oh, at least I don't feel like you can. I feel, I don't know. It's just something that I think I learned from the J. Cole song. Don't give him too much of you. Don't give the people too much of you. But he's at a higher status, I guess. But still, there's different levels to it. You feel me? So I feel like you can't give people too much of you. That's just my opinion on it. I'm just so lost when it comes to dating apps. To be honest with you, to be honest with you, like you want me to be honest with you. I am more of, I'm more of the in-person type. I used to be like this now. I used to be like this before college. Then I had met a good friend of mine, and he was from New York, and I had hung out with him. But anyways, long story short, I, now I am the more I am the in-person type, right? It just doesn't feel the same. I seen this meme though. It was funny. It was it was like y'all are familiar with Pokemon Go, right? So Pokemon Go, it's a, it was an app where you could like swipe and find monsters in, in your uh, area. Why do they say it sounded just like Tinder? <laughs> ah, that had me dying. That had me dying. I'm not gonna lie. Cause they do be some, listen, I, I won't do that. Let me not do that. Let me not do that. Somebody may see me as a monster, even though I think I'm following. You know what I'm seeing? When, yeah, when did it date and make the move to social media? That's my question. When did it become more, when did dating become more of a social media app type thing rather than an in-person type thing? People be like, I don't really, you know, another thing people be like, I don't really do that AI stuff. I don't really, listen, when you're dealing with them dating apps that you like that much, them dating apps that you in love with, that's AI, right? That's AI. I just want to let you know that because a lot of times we don't know how we interact with AI and we hear about all this stuff that's happening. We've been dealing with AI. But back to the dating thing, right? Was it IG DMs? Is that when people started? Was it Instagram when they implemented that feature? Is that when people started getting real heavy on, on dating on social media or getting to know people on social media? Or was it like before then? Was it like MySpace and Facebook? Or what did they have before then Like that people were doing on social media? That's what I'm trying to think of. I low-key hate it. I hate it signing into DMs. 
to be honest with you, because I always felt like I was going to get screenshotted. And it's not even like I was doing nothing crazy in the DMs. I'm not even that type of person to be doing nothing crazy in the DMs, but it's just, I feel like if you were to pursue a person in their DMs and they keep that DM screenshot or whatever, let's just say they didn't even want you, right? Because some people are petty. I'm not saying everybody's like this, but some people are petty, right? So let's just say they screenshotted you and now your name comes up in a conversation and they'd be like, girl, look. He was in my DMs. And it's like, why are you even doing that? Like, why are you even doing that? You don't want to pursue me. It's not like I'm out here, you know what I'm saying, displaying myself to everybody, like trying to get at everybody. But like, why are you screenshot? It never happened, at least not to my knowledge, but that was always my fear. So I just, the in-person thing was more me. And with that being said, like, I, I know, I know pre-social media men and women there were some brave individuals, right? There were some courageous, confident, courageous and confident people. They really were because in order to get to know somebody, you had to go to that person and talk to that person. You know what I'm saying? You had to have some type of, you also had to have some type of talk game. Me, I would have fit in perfect. I had to get the gab. I freestyle it. But it may all makes sense. It makes perfect sense. But y'all did have some similarities, right? Back in the day, Y'all had them love letters. That was like y'all version of DMing, right? Where you write your love letter, it'll be like, to my heart, my heart, from Mr. D, a.k.a. Certified Lover Boy. Y'all not slick. I know y'all was back there talking all crazy back then. Y'all not low. So you can't say too much about us in this social media thing because it's not like y'all were all face-to-face -face with it, getting that up getting that body language communication you know what i'm saying like all y'all weren't like that it's crazy to think about though like pulling up on somebody with a pen or pencil and a pad for the bag is crazy like going over to somebody and actually bagging them but i can't honestly i can't imagine it because i but like doing it it's like they would literally get anything that they could write on and as long as they had something to write with, that was good money. This is good money. That is good money. Imagine trying to pull up somebody today with a pen and a pad and trying to bag them. Sheesh. It might be kind of fly, though, low key. It might be kind of fly. It's like real nostalgic. A fun fact, though. Here's a fun fact. And I was doing my research on dating and whatnot, how people found out about each other back in the day. I don't know how long ago this was. I think. I actually think it was like late 1800s, like 1890, going into the 1900s. I seen these articles in the newspaper. Listen, listen, they put ads in the newspaper. No cap. Look it up. You can find it. Look it up. They put ads in the newspaper to, it was like their social media in a sense. It's kind of like their Tinder, their Bumble or whatever. I'll read you two of them, right? One of them read, I am an affectionate little woman, 30 years old. Some means would marry. Post to Addy. Crazy, right? Listen, another one said, businesswoman desires acquaintance of elderly moneyed, elderly moneyed gentlemen. Matrimonially, ma damn. <laughs> Matrimonially inclined. And post to Addy. Crazy. Putting your Addy in the newspaper with your name is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe times were different. I didn't live in those times. Maybe it's not as crazy as I'm thinking. But now, yeah, crazy. You never know who's going to pull up on you. But fast forward, right? Fast forward to, I don't even know what year it was. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure out when did DMs and all that become, become real popular. Anybody put it in the comments. If let me know, help me find out. And if you got to know anything about the ads in the newspaper, put that in the comments too, because I, I need to know if there's any truth to that, because I did find three articles, but I don't know. The technology these days is so good. It could have been made up, but who would make that up? Maybe overthinking it. Anyways, it goes down in the DMs. Yo, Gotti had everybody in everybody DMs for no reason. Hey, if y'all sit down, go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Go somewhere. Everybody and everybody DMs. You got now you have access to a limited amount of people, right? Social media 
revolutionized the way we connect. Then, until this day, you feel me? Until this day. It's hard. It's hard for me to actually remember when things didn't. I can't even remember not having social media, honestly. Even though I was born in 94. But it's hard for me to remember not having social media. I don't remember what it's like. It's all of those memories got pushed out by modern thinking. Not only IG, though, like I said, you had Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, I, I, Black People Meet. What's the one with the Christian? You had the Christian one. I can't even think of the name of it. I even seen people uh, like content creators meeting up, doing videos, linking up, end up dating each other. If you know anything about what Twitch is, which is a streaming platform where people go to play video games and whatnot, and they have moderators to moderate their chat. So whenever they're playing a game, random people can't come in and just say crazy things. But I seen this one gamer, random guy that was in her stream for a while, end up being one of her moderators. She end up marrying this man. It's a lot. It's like Dayton has evolved, I want to say. Like, well, it's definitely evolved because it's changed, right? It's definitely evolved. It's a whole lot different than how it used to be. Like I said, you literally have unlimited access to women and men that you never even speak to, right? You probably never even speak to these people if you didn't have the social media to do it with, right? It, people be doing all types of crazy stuff in the DMs too, though, like gassing people up. Low-key, I think that's what's caused a lot of this, I want to say false confidence, right? Because people be lying to people, boosting their head up, that giving them this feeling of cocky. Like, they feel more cocky. And, and like I said, for me, it's really been like a dating fatigue. Like, I just, I don't know. That's why I don't really deal with too many. That's why I just downloaded it back. It's like... I'm fatigued with this shit. Like, I'm tired. It's like the social media. It just it doesn't feel real to me. But that's a different story, right? That's a different story. Again, though, just a reminder for y'all who are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any audio outlet, we have visuals on YouTube. And for those who are on YouTube, we have this podcast in the audio version. So you can listen to it whenever you're on a jog at work or cooking in the kitchen or driving around we have it on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you get your podcast at how y'all feeling right i want to know how are y'all feeling about it y'all want to go back to the past where things allow for a deeper more more personal connection right body language reading expression Smiles and eyebrow. You know, when people do their eyebrow like this right here, or or they like, like you can get different feelings. You know what I'm saying? Just off of somebody's eyebrow, like that personal, that face to face thing is crazy. I don't know if anybody ever did their eyebrow like that to y'all. I don't. I wouldn't hope so because it's like I was imitating how The Rock did his eyebrow. I don't think that would be like a appealing thing to be honest with you. But anyways. Or are you feeling like the modern times are better? Is life a little better the way it is now when it comes to dating? Because you don't have to, you don't have to commit to a date before you get to know somebody, right? Like you could be on your couch, you could be at work or whatever. You can get to know the person while you're there and then go on a date. You can do your research at home. You know what I'm saying? You can look them up depending on what level of what societal level he's on. You may he you may be able to look he or she up if they have any other social media platforms you can see what type of person they are who what type of things they engage in you know what i'm saying is it better now is it better now or is it better back then it's not even about if it is if it's better right honestly it's about which one do you prefer which one do you prefer I know with this today, modern times with the dating apps, there's like some real problems though, right? You, it, for one, it feels superficial. It feels superficial to me. And that's part of like people putting the effects on their pictures and some of the effects are really good. 
they blend really good. And it's hard to tell sometimes, right? It is hard to tell. And of course, there's other problems I don't want to get into, but you had the queen of, you had the queen of problems. And that is ghosting. People will be quick to ghost you online. When it comes to online dating, people will be quick to ghost you. And that's a real problem. Like, why don't people just say it's not working or they just, but it's not even responding. He'll figure it out. She'll figure it out. On to the next. You know what I'm saying? That's a real issue, though. I feel like you a person at least deserves to know you're moving on. Maybe not. Maybe you feel differently. I don't know. What's your opinion on it? Let me know. But here's some good news. I don't go through that. <laughs> I do not go through that. But I feel for you, though, my heart. I feel for you. You know, like I said, again, it's honestly, it's honestly not about which is better. Both have unique features. Both have potential for heartbreak. You know what I'm saying? You could get your heart broke online just as bad as you can from meeting face to face with a person, right? Probably more online because like you're intertwined with each other more. You're with that person more through the internet or whatever. So it builds to for a deeper bond or whatever. Both, both have some type of meaningful connection, right? Whether it be digital or face-to-face, -face, whether it's local or distant lovers, whether it's a DM or a love letter, you know what I'm saying? It's about that special connection. It's about building that special connection, getting them butterflies in your stomach. Yeah, that, that's a weirdly, that feeling is weird. It's, I don't know, but it's oddly satisfying, right? To know that you have met a person that gives you butterflies. It's like a, it's, I don't want to say it's a bad feeling, but it's, damn, like, it makes me think different a little bit. Meeting a person that gives you butterflies, is, give me butterflies, it, it makes me think different. It changes my thinking a little bit. It's just, it's like my body's trying to freeze me up, but I'm too good with my words. I'm too good with my words. It can't stop me. <laughs> but yeah, so... The date has changed in some ways, but in some ways it's still the same. It just looks different, right? Think of it as a repackaging, right? You're just presenting yourself in a different way. But as we see, in a lot of ways, it's still the same. It is really still the same. But with that, love is love, baby. Love is love, my hot, <laughs> my rib. You feel me? So, yeah, next segment we talk about is my favorite every each and every time, not only because it's about technology, but it's about black people and technology, more specifically, the AI field. AI is artificial intelligence, right? And I named this part of the segment AI. Again, not for artificial intelligence, but for African intelligence, black people and AI. Last week we discussed, I want to say it was, her name was Timit, Timit Jebru. I want to say, I apologize if I butcher your name, but she has done work at Google with AI, Ruha Benjamin. She has done work at Princeton. She has a book named Race After Technology. I plan on reading, but this week, this week. We're doing, we're going to do things a little bit differently. So those of y'all who tuned in and this is your first episode, listen, you got the pleasure of being the first, right? Like your first episode is we're doing something new. You feel me? Yeah. Work with me here. Instead of identifying and putting a spotlight on one specific scientist, this week we'll talk about issue within AI as a whole, right? And the issue with, is within the workplace, right? So we, if you tuned in maybe a couple weeks ago, I want to say it was probably episode four, four or five. I went over how Goldman Sachs put out a report saying that 300 million jobs, which equates to a greater number than 300 million people, will lose jobs 
due to AI. And I don't feel like enough people are aware of this, even though you would think a number like that would have significant impact on society, but apparently not. A lot of people aren't worried about it and think they're irreplaceable. They don't see how a computer could take their position, which I, that's what I'm, that's one of my main purposes of this podcast as well is to raise awareness of AI. But again, this week, I want to talk about AI within the workplace. Uh, so AI works off of historical data, right? This is the first thing. AI works off of histor historical data, right? And within that data, you have biases. So here's a passage, an article that reads, AI models are typically trained on historical data. And if that data reflects biased human decisions, the model can replicate or even amplify that bias. For instance, AI, if an AI is used for resume screening, and is trained on a data sheet where African Americans were underrepresented in a certain job role due to historical discrimination, the AI might learn to associate those job roles with other racial or ethnic groups, unfairly disadvantaging African American applicants. So basically, the people who train these AIs, whether it's intentional or unintentional, right? It is trained on like historical data, right? But it's also trained by people that may or may not be our skin color, may not look like us. or So it's not to play the race card or anything, but that could be an issue within it. And just we live different lives. We perceive things differently in life, right? We go through different experiences. Certain things can be said to us that gives off a different feel than it may give off to another ethnic group right so at with this point being made that article makes it seems like it will be unjust right the ai biases built within it would be unjust don't let ai become the new battleground for racial equality right we need to interact with this thing and figure how it works and just the flaws that it has within it Moving on. The next one is socioeconomic biases. The article reads, many AI systems in the hiring process use proxies for skills and capabilities, like education level or previous job titles, right? Think of it, think of proxies like qualification. However, due to systematic racial disparities, these proxies can be biased against African Americans. For example, Due to educational inequalities, African Americans are less likely to have degrees from certain institutions or have had certain job titles. If an AI system is trained to prioritize applicants with these qualifications, it could unfairly disadvantage African American applicants, right? And with a lot of the times, that can be a real issue with not only AI but with humans as well, where they'll choose a person on paper is qualified. You know what I'm saying? But just because a person has the qualifications doesn't mean they are qualified some of the times. You know what I'm saying? When we're programming these things, whoever's programming these things, or it's learning on its own, That that I see where that can be a real issue. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not like it's unless they start asking generalized questions, I guess. I, I, I'm not sure how that will work, though, to be honest with you. But these are some issues that I just want to make people aware of. These are real issues. But now I'll go into two theoretical ways AI could be biased. The first one, lang language processing bias. This process bias could occur in AI systems that process natural language, such as those that analyze cover letters or conduct automated interviews right so when it's reading the ai the computer think of it as computer the ai can read cover letters go over cover letters and it can give in the future may be able to give automated interviews african-american vernacular 
is a valid linguistic system with its own rules and conversations. I say certain things in different ways. We all have different slang and whatnot that has been adapted by society, adopted by society. So is, is it going to pick up on those nuances? But I'll continue reading. But it's often stigmatized and misunderstood. If an AI system is trained primarily on a data on a, on data and standard American English, it may unfairly penalize speakers of African American vernacular English. It may penalize African American vernacular English, interpreting their language use as incorrect or unprofessional. This could result in lower scores or negative evaluations for African American job applicants who use African American vernacular English. So the way we talk, basically. Vernacular does matter in some cases. It does, right? It does. But the lack of preferred English method shouldn't disqualify those who are qualified. You know what I'm saying? We all have, sl like I said, we all have slang that has been adopted. And I don't know if this AI will be able to pick up on the nuances and consider it appropriate for an interview. Right. Even though the boss may use it or the management may use it or corporate may use the same word. I don't know if the AI is trained on the same language or whatever. I don't know if it'll pick up those terms as professional or not. And another thing is, I don't know the tolerance, right? I don't know how much you can use before. Because this is all theoretical, right? This is technology they're working on that they're trying to get right. But I don't know how much you would have to be penalized before they disqualify you or anything like that. But moving on. The second theoretical article says machine learning fairness paradox. This theoretical bias stems from the tension between different, between different con conceptions of fairness in AI. For example, one common measure of fairness is demographic parity where the selection rate should be the same for different demographic groups, right? Give you an example. To give you an example, suppose 15% of a city's population identifies as Hispanic. If demographic parity is achieved in the city's public schools, then about 15% of the students at each school would be Hispanic. If a school only has 5% Hispanic, it does not have demographic parity, right? Demographic parity. Another measure is equal opportunity where the true positive rate should be the same for different groups. In some cases, it's mathematically impossible to satisfy both these measures at the same time. If an AI system is designed to optimize for one measure over the other, it could inadvertently introduce bias. Here's an example. For instance, right? If a company uses AI systems that prioritize demographic parity and promotions, but there are systemic factors that cause African-American employees to be less likely to meet the promotion criteria, then the system might unfairly disadvantage African-American employees. I just, I just feel like we, it's not even, it's a strong feeling. And it's not... I don't even know how to describe it, but it's not just a feeling. It's something that I know we need to pay more attention to. We have to pay more attention to these type of things. Just because they're theoretical statements or whatever, like, it is something that is in work, right? Like, they may not have it now or may not even be, may not even be in the works. But a lot of these things are coming and we need to be involved, right? We need to be included. The mitigation of these biases is a critical concern in the field of AI ethics and involves both technical solutions like the new machine learning techniques and non-technical ones like better data collection. Uh, oh yeah, like better data collection practices and policy changes. So here's some of the importances, right? He notes, neglecting these systems could actually Neglecting these systems could actually do more harm than good. I know that people fear that AI will take over the world and all this, but that's just, 
that's just a picture people are trying to paint, right? It could be used as a fear tactic. It could be true. But you're by you being a part of the by you painting more of this dystopia makes it more likely to happen, right? That and I say that because of the saying there's strength in numbers. But and I and there's a couple other reasons I say it, but I won't get into. There's this small corner of people that have this utopic view on AI and know and think that we can have we can coexist with AI, AGI systems, super intelligence, right? It's just the matter of aligning them with the ethics of humanity. So with that being said, I just know that we need to start having a positive outlook on this thing instead of just keep thinking negatively. Like, it has it, what has it done bad? What has it done wrong? That's one thing I always ask. I'm like, what has AI done to you or to someone that you may know in your life that has caused you to think this way about it other than you watching a movie? But there's plenty of other movies out there to where humans and AI, AGI systems coexist. It's just about what you choose to look at, what they feed you, and what you take for truth or, you know what I'm saying? It's just about your perspective on things. Like, there's a quote, and it goes, change the, way you, change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change. And that should, that should be on your mind. That should stick with you right there. Change the way you look at things, and the things you look at change, right? So again, neglecting these things will do more harm in my eyes than it would than using them because another thing what if it comes turns out to be good and now you've neglected it for this long time now it doesn't have the data that it needs to treat us as fairly as other ethnic groups or races like we we should definitely think about that possibility just as much as we think about that could be the dystopia right that could be it instead of you thinking about it killing off humanity think about that think about something that's ruling the world or in control of majority systems in the world and you didn't input any of your data into it. So now it you're falling short to everyone else. Because honestly, AI is supposed to be fruit, like it, it's supposed to be fruitful for us, right? Fruitful for us, right? It's supposed to bring fruitation, right, into our lives. Don't, again, don't let it become the new battleground for racial equality don't you know what i'm saying we have to be more involved and i know i keep saying don't but i but when i'm saying don't i want you to do right like i want you to do so i want you to be involved i'm telling you don't neglect it be involved go do you know what i'm saying being at all these jobs i told you in the beginning being at all these jobs are supposed to be taken by AI. We want to be in the mix. We want it to have our data. We want it to be able to recognize our faces as good people other than single mothers, debt-ridden citizens, or things like, because that's a real issue. That is a real issue. Man, I stress, it's not even in the part about being equal. I just stress so much about people not paying attention to this, and I don't see it as a good thing that we don't focus on it. But yeah, with all that being said, that is the artificial intelligence, African intelligence segment. And that has been today's episode of the Psych Expansion Podcast. I hope that I have taught you something. I hope that you find love, whether it be in a DM or a love note, virtual or face-to-face. -face, you know what I'm saying? Local or long distance. I hope that you find love. I hope that you pay more attention to this. AI problems. Go follow us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. You guys have been going really crazy, running up the numbers on the podcast, and I appreciate you. I really do. You know what I'm saying? Gracias, mi amor. Hasta la próxima.